Dobar dan i dobrodošli. Sit down and relax as we are about to read some webtoons and manga. I recommend purchasing the official scans or translations and reading along with those open as well, for a better reading experience and to support the creators behind the works that I react to in my streams. Links are in the description. You can find me on YouTube, Twitch and Patreon, so subscribe to or follow some European chick if you want to read along and suggest what to read next. Now without further ado, let's read. Goodbye, Eddie. Yes, I will be reading everything that Fujimoto puts out. What makes you think I wouldn't? Stop asking me. All right, so... Bitch, okay, there we go. So, when it comes to Goodbye, Eddie, uh, we have to know that the volume is not out yet. So this is not a Tankubon or anything. This is the digital release. For the Tankubon, they usually um, alter a few things, um, clean them up, make them prettier looking, whatever, and um, and you have a cover and, and so on and so forth. Hello. Hi. Yes, um, we're reading it today. So um, this is basically the first version that was put out and it was simultaneously released on um, the <sighs> Manga Plus app by Viz. So we are reading the Viz translation of the digital first release of Fujimoto's one shot called Goodbye 80. And I'm curious about it, okay? I know the stream is going to be longer today because these are just about 200 pages, which is an entire volume, an entire manga volume. But I don't want to just, you know, do a double stream, like do one stream today and um, read the other half next Monday. I want to read it all in one sitting. So... It's going to be a longer stream. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> if it takes four hours, it takes four hours. <laughs> but this is what we're doing today. Okay. Uh, eight hour stream. But hi, Akakitsugami. Uh, okay, we're just getting straight into, into the comic now. I got a smartphone for my birthday. This is my mom and dad. Cute. Why does she look like Makima? <laughs> Uh, anyway, <laughs> and this is me. I just started middle school. You don't look like a middle schooler, but okay. Woo! Ta-da! Here's my birthday cake. He just started middle school, which means he's like 12, 13, 12, 13. Uh, Mom Kima. <laughs> it's going to be an emotional ride. Yeah, I'm, I'm prepared. Happy 12th birthday. Wow, he's 12 in middle school. Okay, here's my birthday cake. It's shortcake with whipped cream. Yuta, listen, uh, as your mom, can I make a small request? <laughs> it's his birthday. It's his turn to make small requests. Okay, mom. <laughs> oh, but this is cute. You know how I could die from my illness? Wait, what the fuck? It's his birthday. Please don't bring up your breast cancer or whatever. <laughs> how does that make you feel? Well, right now I'm feeling overwhelmed. That came out of left field, mom. I know you might die, but can we please celebrate my birthday and eat the fucking shortcake? Without you having to remind me every day that I'm gonna lose my only mother out there. God damn. Bro, we're not even two pages in! <laughs> we're not even two pages in and the mother is dying! <laughs> you know how I could die from my illness? How does that make you feel? I don't feel like talking about that on my birthday. Same, boy, same. 
You da, you da listen. I don't want to listen. I want you to. I want you to start shooting videos of me. Huh? That's fucking sad. On video, you can hear my voice and see me move. That way, even if I'm gone, you can still remember me. Can you do that for me? That's fucking morbid, dude. It's morbid. To say that, first of all, on his birthday. And second of all, to his face, he's 12. That's fucking sad, dude. Some French chick. Like, I can't- I'm sorry, but I can't stop thinking <laughs> that you made this entire account on Twitter and, and here on YouTube with that name because of me. <laughs> But you were already bringing the sadness just with two pages. French must already have physical release. The French probably have part two of Goodbye, Eddie. It's called... Hello again, Eddie. Uh, and they're reading it. I heard it's a classic already in France. This is so sad. Why is the dad not saying anything like, Honey, honey, please shut up right now. We love you, and we will miss you. But right now, I really want him to blow out the candles. I, I want to eat the whipped cream, okay? Please, honey. <clears throat> Hello? I, I mean, huh? <laughs> On video, you can hear my voice and see me move. That way, even if I'm gone, you can still remember me. Can you do that for me? Yeah. In France, we know Fujimoto-san's identity, too. Whoa. <laughs> the French just having all these privileges. The French even have... They harbor Fujimoto's grandmother. <laughs> His grandmother is either French and in France, or she's just in France, and he visits her every so often to get into her will. I, I read the comments, I read the comments. Fujimoto is a funny one. Fujimoto gonna make a manga story based in French... in France at this point. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. The dad is just feeling bad about this entire situation. And the mom having ruined the birthday. But on the other hand, I, I kind of understand why she'd be so tactless, because, I mean, her illness is not showing any tact either. It's taking her life away from her. That's pretty tactless, if you ask me. So she's allowed to have some tactlessness and selfishness shine through. Your birthday is coming up, too. You're dreading it already. No need to dread it, dude. You're just turning, what, tw 27? That's, that's okay. Yeah, in Fire Punch, in the extra wor a word, he mentioned meeting his grandma twice a year in France to get into her will. Yeah. <laughs> We're on a family trip to the aquarium. She's still there. Dad's here too, because he's off work. It's cute how they're spending quality time together, this entire family. And look, the mom is throwing peace signs too. All their gang signs here. Oh, that's that's kind of cute. They have family gang signs. Dad's here too, because he's off work. Dun dun dun. Wait, dun 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 dun. Here's the finished parfait. She's cute. The mom is being cute. Let me see how it tastes. A stray cat. Mom and dad are watching TV. They're laughing. Cute. For as short as the story is, it's got a lot of great moments. Yeah, I heard so. Mom's gonna poo. No filming in here. <laughs> yeah. Stray cat number four. Mom's about to take a bath. Camera off, buster. Dad's crying in secret. Bitch, shut up! This is turning- like, this has been dark from the beginning, but it's getting darker and darker. The funny moments in between just accentuate the darkness, okay? They don't make it go away. It just makes it worse. 
in the last two weeks, I mistakenly said I'll turn 28 numerous times. Why do you know my age better than me? Because you're just one year older than me and I at least know my age most of the time. I am 26, right? Yeah, it's 2022. I'm 26, so you gotta be 27. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? Why don't you know your age? Dad's crying in secret. Dad's asleep. Mom, too. He's filming them in their own... Uh, bedroom while they're asleep. Kind of freaky. I'm keeping watch in case she dies in her sleep. That's... insane. It's actually fucking insane. Bro, they gotta live with anxiety the entire time. My parents bought me a PC because my smartphone ran out of space. I've shot about six total hours of video now. This is mom all dressed up. Cute. It's date night. I'm in the hospital for tests. It's surprisingly comfy here. I feel so bad for the mom. So bad. You read Fire Punch yesterday? Like the entire 8 volume series just in one day? That's not good. Read it again with me, but s slowly, okay? I'm gonna start that one next week. No! No, 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 no. The week after, probably, because I want to do the inter interviews next week. And uh, there's a lot of them, so I don't know if I'm gonna have to do one next week and the week after, but after the interviews, I'm re-reading Fire Punch on stream. Oh, so volume one only. Good, good. You gotta take it in slowly. Speaking of Fire Punch, your volumes arrived. Good, and now I'm gonna arrive this weekend to pick up my volumes and give you your Vagabond volumes. We're gonna exchange these volumes. <laughs> I read the entirety of Fire Punch in two sittings. The manga is so good. It is, but you shouldn't do that. It just requires a lot. I mean, same. No, <laughs> I binge read that shit. <laughs> in two days. <laughs> I gotta read it again. But I still remember all of it. Almost all of it, probably. It's a... Uh, it was my first encounter with Fujimoto. And from then, I, I, I knew that he's something special. That's why I got into Chainsaw Man, too. Mappa is giving us hints that Chainsaw Man is gonna air in fall 2022. Yeah, I heard, isn't it October 2022? That's a rumor that I heard. The day Fire Punch gets an anime adaptation, I can rest peacefully. I don't need an anime ad adaptation of Fire Punch. But yeah. Not Mappa, sadly. It's just genius, guess. Oh, okay. Okay. So it was, again, source. I saw it in my symbolic, cryptic uh, dreams. How many points do you give Dad's cooking? <laughs> 50. If I punch will have three movies, trust me, I'm French. I, uh, yeah, I gotta trust you. This is a French person saying that. I, it's, it's, it's real. These three movies have already been shot. And they know it. It's just us that, um, are getting hints now. Aww. Dad's crying. Oh, I feel so bad for this family. Oh. This is Taguchi, the nurse. She's close to my mom. It's Taguchi. This is a scrape I got. Looks nasty. My video files crossed the 40 hour mark. I'm staying home from school starting tomorrow because mom's in the hospital for real now. That's sad, bitch. Why do I need to look at a little boy? Going through a traumatic experience, an entire family being ripped apart. Why do I have to read that shit? That's disrespectful. This is my face right now. I'm unwell at the time now. It feels like this might uh, last until I die. Oh my god, can you all shut the fuck up? 
It's so sad. I hate this. I hate this. Fire Punch getting adapted in movie form has been leaked a bunch of times, actually. Was always wrong. Yeah, but this time it's real because the French person said that. In the second trailer, you can see in the last that Mappa has written the Chainsaw Man is going to broadcast in 2022. Wow. There was a second trailer? I had no idea there was a second trailer out there. What? This is like someone recording their family slowly deteriorating. It's so depressing. It is. It's not like someone recording. It is someone recording. Them. And we're witnessing that. It's... I don't know why we're doing that. Do we need that pain? I think we've all experienced something like that before, too. So, I don't, I don't need this another time. <clears throat> uh, there's no second trailer, man. They just re-uploaded the same trailer. Oh, okay, okay. This is the hospital food. It tastes bland. I don't know if it's the food or my taste buds. Oh. Hey now, kiddo. There's no need to film your dad. I cooked this. How many points do I get? Two. That's so mean. Stop it. Even is that a mind of Chainsaw Man anime airs in 2023? I feel like 2022 is too soon. I don't care as long as we get all of it at once and not like in two parts. That's so useless. I want it all at once. <clears throat> Give me... There's 97 chapters. So I need at least 30 episodes. Let's say 36, okay? Just random number. 36 episodes. I need that much at least. But yeah. I have over 100 hours of video files now. Also... Also, I guess my mom might not have long now. Bro, why are you doing this to yourself? Do you really want to go through this again? In, I don't know, 10 years? Who's gonna watch that? Who's gonna watch these 100 videos? 100 hours of video? Who? I, I still can't wrap my head around it, so I'm not even sad about it. No, I'm sad. I am. Aww. Yuta. Your mom's in her final moments now. Yuta, it's time to go to the hospital. Bro, I hate this. Your mom, she wants you to film her until her dying breath. That is morbid as fuck, dude. Why does the mom want that? I mean, I know why she wants that, but why would, does she want that for her son? It's... It's sad because you know how... Yeah, you're afraid of death. You know, mortality is a thing with humans still, sadly, for now. Uh, so I understand why you're saying, like, capture me as I am right now, because it's gonna survive me. That's how I'm gonna keep living on. You're basically getting immortalized when you're being, I don't know, photographed or filmed. Uh, it, it captures not just the moment, but the person themselves, so... It can keep existing in another form. And when you're, especially when you're already close to death, you, you'd want that immortality to be kind of secured. You want to make sure it's there. So I understand why she'd want to be filmed until her last moments, but for her son, that's gonna be traumatic, dude. For her son, it's gonna be not so nice. And even for the dad, not really nice. Which anime, manga, or manhwa world do you want to live in? Mine, to be honest. No, I don't want any. <laughs> 
Um, maybe bleach? <laughs> because I, as a normal person, would not take notice of anything. So it's like living in my world. When there is, I don't know, Shinigami out there and Hollows and whatever. I mean, that's all their problem. They're gonna take care of their problems. I'm just here dying normally and hopefully not turning into a hollow. And even if I am, who the fuck cares? It's uh, giving more trouble to the Shinigami. Like, if uh, life gave me trouble all 90 years, hopefully, of my life, then I can at least be a little bit of trouble to someone out there. Who cares? So I guess bleach. Bleach. Because I'd... I'd not notice any difference. <laughs> Hopefully. Unless I was one of those supernatural people in Bleach, then I would not want to be in the Bleach world. <laughs> but I'm not saying Chainsaw Man because there's just too much destruction happening. Um, Like in the real physical world, too much. And have you seen the monsters? The devils? Like they're nightmare-inducing. I I don't want to be in Chainsaw Man's world where your fears are fucking reality. No, thank you. Um, so yeah, like I I also don't want to live there because you know my house could be destroyed with me inside. If whatever devil dis uh, decides they're gonna uh, wreak some havoc out there, but then I have no choice but to be crushed or split apart or something. So no, um, up. I want to live in, in Bleach because then I would not take any notice of anything. Deishi, deyatsu, The fuck? I'm eating a sandwich right now and going to school. Who the fuck cares about that? Um, I think it's gonna be two parts. Most new animes aren't over 24 episodes. Yes, and that's annoying. Uh, but I'm hoping they animate all of part one so they don't have to wait uh, longer than a year for the second season. Yeah. This is where everything goes downhill. Oh, here in, in the one shot. Thank God mortality is a thing. No, I don't want to die. I don't want to die. Like, I, I'm still hoping that I'm going to be immortal. Like, in this world, be immortal and not die ever. I'm still hoping for that. That's my plan A for life. Plan B is dying, of course, but, you know, stretching it to... Like, I, I, I don't want the deadline to be very close to now. I want it to be as far away from me as possible, so and that's plan B. Just drag out my life as far out as possible, maybe 150 years. That would be cool. But, um... But also that I'm going to be fit and healthy until, like, 150. It would be dumb if, like, from age 60 to age 150, I'm fucking immobile. I can't, I can't wipe my own ass and I'm all wrinkly. That would, that would suck. I want my Less wrinkles to appear maybe at age 100. So for 100 years, I'm, like, young, fit and healthy. For the last 50 years, I can start to have cell death like to for my cells to die at a higher rate than uh they're reproducing that's okay if that starts at age 100 and then in the last i don't know five years it's okay if i'm a completely useless grandma Th that's plan b <laughs> that is plan b plan a is just to never die and to stay healthy and young and mobile and full of energy Th that's plan a uh living in jujutsu kaisen would be the safest literally zero problems uh did you literally zero problems in life if you don't go to japan yeah true <laughs> Because those bitches only exist in Japan for some reason. But still, like, what if I... What if I'm in Tokyo, you know? And I'm just uh, at a local uh, airport or, uh, yeah, airport's a gacha bon 
And I want to get another one of the mushrooms that I'm collecting. And then suddenly I'm I'm fucking burned to death by just invisibility because a hot like like temperature wise hot um curse is taking a stroll nearby. That would, that would be dumb. I don't want that. My hero seems pretty chill. Oh, my hero academia no it doesn't. It doesn't, and it's also... I don't want to be surrounded by superhero-like beings. I don't want that. No, I don't like quirks. I don't like that, no. Gun Devil spent less than a second in Hawaii and killed hundreds. No way would anyone pick Chainsaw Man. Yeah, right? Just imagine seeing the Gun Devil outside your house, you know? Yeah, if you saw that, it's too late already. It's like seeing an ice bear when you're... um. Up north, what is what is it called again? In the Arctic, when you're uh, up there, up in the north, okay, and you see you spot an ice bear in the distance, then it's fucking too late already. Just say your prayers, okay? You're done, unless you have like a, I don't know, an airplane right next to you that you can hop into. But if not, you're just fucking meat already. You're already their next meal. Just imagine- oh yeah, yeah. Two parts means better quality for each episode, though. No, it doesn't. If they drag it out to, I don't know, 20, 23... I mean, I, I'm just saying it doesn't, but I have no idea, okay. I'm just saying I would have- I would rather wait another year and then have all episodes at once, like, once a week, but... You know, just like with Bleach, I'm always bringing up Bleach, but... Uh, you had so many episodes at once, and when it caught up to the manga, pff, throw in a filler. And then continue with the manga adaptation, then throw in another filler, and so on and so forth. But you have consistent um, releases for like 300 or so episodes. I like that better than... <laughs> I like that better than one part, it's 12 episodes. Then wait another year, and then you have 12 episodes again. Who the fuck needs that? I don't like that. Just give me all at once. I'm gonna wait three years. And then, uh, watch three, uh, 30 episodes. I'd rather have that. This one shot is gonna be fun. Yeah, we're on page 15 and we already wasted, what, half an hour? Imagine living in a Subaru in ReZero. Never watched that, so I have no idea what you talk about. Ever since I've read Fire Punch, the thought of immortality scares me. You're right about that, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not... I'm just... I just want immortality. I don't want indestructibility. Whereas Agni has that too. So, um, th that's... Yeah, that's a recipe for a disaster. I don't want that. I just want the immortality. So when the world ends, I'm gonna end with it. People can still run me over with their car and I'm gonna die. That's okay. But I, I don't want for my body to kill me. That's what I don't want. Other people, they can kill me anytime, so that's okay. I, I, I'm not, uh, I don't wish for that. Just immortality, like innate immortality that can be ended through violent sudden death from um, extrinsic sources. That's what I'm okay with, but not just my dying uh, by myself for for no reason. Like, why would my body just fucking end me? Like, why? Why do you want to die, bitch? Huh? Why do you want to die? <laughs> oh, thank you, Uriamis. Thank you. That is very nice. And hello. I always forget to greet my viewers. Hello, welcome. But yeah, I just don't want this bitch to fucking dest destroy itself. Like, what the fuck is self destruction even for? Like, I, I know we are programmed to destroy ourselves, but have the species going by, I don't know, procreating. I don't want that. Like, bitch, I'm gonna... I'm gonna... I'm really gonna take out my uterus, okay? And exchange it for immortality, if it has to be. I'm gonna throw that shit away. 
or sacrifice it to some fucking demon. You can have my uterus. Here, do with it whatever you want. And make more demon offspring with it if you want. Get that shit out of me. But give me immortality instead. So, I'd be all for that. I don't need to procreate, bitch. I don't need to pass on my genes. I I'd rather keep my genes. And keep passing through everyday life. Like, pass my genes uh, uh, to the, the next street there, to the shopping center, to the next beach. And that's how I want my genes to go through life and keep existing on this planet by still being there, present in me. That's what I want. Just stay moisturized. I'm always moisturized. When I was... Wait. When I was uh, growing up, I couldn't imagine living past 19. So in my mind, I'm living on borrowed time already. That's fucking insane. Couldn't be me. Just stay moisturized. Yeah, come to France, European woman. I will. It's fine to see the gun devil. You just gotta be like women, uh, a woman. Who is 18 plus born in one of the months? It is fine. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Earth in France, people are already immortal. Actually, I have seen four timelines. It's my fourth time watching this live. <laughs> oh no! Smunga is just something else. Yeah, I'm not even reading it, and people are commenting it to get me to go back to the manga and read the manga instead of just talking about nonsense. Really? I'd rather be the opposite. I'd rather succumb to natural causes than outside forces. I'm going to do my lunch now, see ya. Lunch? Isn't it like 2 a.m. where you are? Or did I mistake you for someone else? But go have your lunch. Take out your what? Yeah. In fact, I agree. Your mom, she wants you to film her until her dying breath. See, I, I wish I... I I'd never be in the situation this mom is in. Because, you know, at least if someone kills me, it's someone else's fault. But not my own fault. Like, it doesn't make sense for me to harm myself and kill myself. It, it really doesn't make sense to me. Like, imagine your phone not working and just fucking destroying itself. Like, I don't know, melting the chips inside of it and you're like... The fuck, why are you doing this, bitch? Same to your body. Like, why the fuck are you? Why the fuck are my telomere shortening? That that doesn't make any sense to me. Why why do you want to destroy yourself, bitch? Do you have a problem? We could talk about it. We could talk it out. We can solve this issue together. Oh yeah. Like, if there was a vaccine out there, this is what I'm hoping for, okay? Even though I think that would be highly problematic, too, in its own way. Uh, but a vaccine, right? That gives you immortality, but in exchange, you're sterilized. Makes fucking sense, because if you're gonna be on this fucking planet forever, you, you gotta make up for, for that, you know, extra number that's not gonna disappear from the census. So you better not give birth and make them immortal too. Then we're going to overpopulate. But then the problem would be that you would probably have this type of social stratification uh, shown with that type of vaccine too, that only the rich and powerful ones, or maybe even you'd have even uh, eugenics come into play that only like specific types of people, not just, um, you know, from their social hierarchy with, you know, power and money, but also, like, with specific genes only can become immortal. So a lot of problems would come uh, into play with that, too. Uh, that only specific types of people would get access to that type of vaccine. So I would never be able to receive that vaccine, even though I, I, just, I just had the idea and... It's me that wants that. A lot of people say, no, it's death that gives life meaning. Let those bitches die, okay? I am here 
And I say life gives life meaning, so please give me that immortality vaccine. Why the fuck do I have to be rich, powerful, uh, beautiful, Aryan or whatever? I don't know what standards they're gonna enforce on the population with that type of vaccine, but... I'm not in for that. I just want to not die. Because I despise death in itself. I don't want to meet God or have a life after death. I want to live life in life. Here? Why do I need to change places to live forever? Pro oh, oh that, that's only a possibility. Like, maybe that's gonna happen because someone said it some thousands of years ago and people started believing that person because he, they spread the rumor and then entire religions appeared because of that. Like, people have bizarre ideas about how to escape this life. Like, why don't you have an idea on how to stay in this life and make this life worthwhile? Why do we want to die? And have a better life somewhere else. Like, maybe please take care of your life here. The planet here. You know, the environment here. That you're inhabiting. Your neighbors here. Like, why do you need to change places to go to heaven? Just come, make heaven on earth. Make earth your heaven. Why do, we, why do we need to fucking die? To have it better. Just make it better here. That, that, that's something that doesn't get into my head. And that's why I, I don't ascribe to any religion. It doesn't make any fucking sense to me. I don't want to fucking die. I want to live here. I want to have a nice life. What's wrong with wanting to extend my nice life? And have it nicer for longer? And make it nice for everyone who wants to? So yeah, I'm just saying, those that want to die, that say, who oh, death gives life meaning, yeah, okay, let them die, let those bitches die, but give me the fucking vaccine. You can, as I said, you can have my uterus, I don't fucking care, just make me immortal. Eight hour stream, yeah, you're right, you're, you're really right, this is gonna be an eight hour stream, it's just my ranting the entire time. This vaccine sounds like it could be a future Fujimoto one shot. <laughs> that reminds me of an episode of Love, Death, and Robots in that exact premise. People are immortal, but procreation is illegalized. Yeah, hell yeah. Love, Death, and Robots. I'm gonna write that down. Love, Death, and Robots. I think I have written it. Wasn't it Jordan? One of my friends talked about it. Anyway, life different robots. I'm gonna remember that. Fire Punch, thank you for coming to my TED talk about life. My name is some European chick. Some European chick, not a woman. The tangent is so rightly timed. I'm always right, except when I'm not. It's a Netflix series. We'll add on Discord. Thank you, Epi. <laughs> See, yeah, so I'm obviously not the only one who's thinking about that. Obviously, someone else had the same idea. And it was probably a good idea that's going to be shown exactly how good it is in that um, Netflix series. It's so good. Go watch it. Okay, I'll watch it. And now we're going to go back to the fucking comic. <laughs> Sorry for the tangent. I didn't even go big Elda mode because I'm thinking, you know, this is just a short, short tangent on the side. It's going to be finished soon. But no, then I just keep going and going. And talking and talking, and it never ends. Anyway. Immortality just sounds like a nightmare to me. You can have my vaccine. It just sounds like a nightmare to you because you're living in a nightmare. Like, you're saying to yourself, this is a nightmare, and I want to escape it to a better dream. Like, how about make this nightmare here go away and turn it into a good dream? That's what I'm saying. <clears throat> but yeah, I I want immortality. That's plan A for life. Elda's plan A for life. Become immortal. Never die. Oh, the Twitch title is wrong. Thank you for telling me. Epi, please fix it. 
Also, please make You Can Have My Uterus as a clip and upload it. That segment was so funny and weird. Okay, yeah, we can have the entire rant clipped <laughs> and put uploaded on YouTube. Wish I had gone big Elda mode, then we'd have better quality video for that, but it is what it is right now. I leave 20 minutes ago to take a bath and we're still on the same page. That's that's the bonus. That's the luxury of the treat that you get when you subscribe to my channel. You will never miss a moment. Because we can't fucking move on, okay? You'll never miss out. You don't need commercial breaks. I am the commercial break. So anyway. Uh, you can't change it? Okay, then now I'm gonna fucking change it. Um, goodbye, Eddie. There we go. It's changed now. Should show in a few seconds or minutes. That's not a bug. That's a feature. Yeah, exactly. Todami Hospital, your mom. She wants you to film her until her dying breath. I'm feeling better, thank you. <clears throat> Yuta, come here. Where are you going? Yuta. Hey, Yuta, come back. Yuta. Yuta. Poor boy. See, if his mom was immortal, he wouldn't have to go through that. I'm sorry. No, poor boy. Excuse me? No, what? Excuse me, what? Hello? What? What? Goodbye, Mom. What? <laughs> it was a movie! <laughs> um... Why did he blow up the hospital? His mom was gonna die anyway. Why bring everyone else down with him? <laughs> what the fuck? Excuse me. It was a school project, okay, and everyone's like... Bro, I was so sad, but now I'm just laughing. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, it was so unexpected. Yeah, same for the students, probably. They were, they were like, oh, this is so fucking sad. I'm probably gonna cry by the end of it. But no, then the explosion comes and they're like... Well, that lifted up my mood now. <laughs> Um, that was, that was a documentary from class 1B's Yuta Ito, Dead Explosion Mother. What a title, what a title. Next, next up is a performance by the Pop Music Club. We just saw a family getting destroyed, a mother dying, and a child uh, going through a traumatic experience and bringing other people down with him, basically. Now here's a pop performance! <laughs> Next up is a performance by the Pop Music Club. My movie just finished playing. Let's see what everybody thinks. Bro, he's still going on with it. Was that real? Was that autobiographical? Was that actually real? What is going on right now? He just turned this into a Michael Bay film out of nowhere? Yeah. Um, I think, uh, I think I speak for all of us when I say I have, like, no idea what the heck we just watched. <laughs> That's just mean right now. Ha 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 hee hee ha 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 ha
Real talk, it's hard to sing after watching such a crappy movie. Even if it was crappy, which it wasn't. Saying that out loud on a stage is overkill. You don't do that. How about I go on stage and say how ugly you are and how you can't sing? Like, even if it's true, like, maybe I shouldn't say that. Because it's not your fault you're ugly and can't sing and are just trying your best. This is mean, yo. You know what you just watched? It was just that the end was a little, you know, unexpected. And it kind of, like uh, I said in, in the Brecht, in his theater, it just takes you out, like, takes you out of the immersion, but it's intentional. So that was definitely not the bad, it, it, it wasn't what made the movie, like, the movie wasn't bad, dude. What the hell? Like, that's actually someone's life out there, probably. Maybe not this boy's life, but someone out there actually did go through that. And maybe did uh, make an entire hospital explode. Who knows? But someone else is going through that. Through that, uh, my mom is dying phase. How can you say that's a crappy movie? That's someone's experience that you're bashing. Fucking children. Sometimes I wish we could still slap children. Ha 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 ha. Huh? Ha 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 ha. Uh, okay, you guys, let's get back on track. Here's our first song. Stop, son. Stop you, my son. Or I'm gonna stop you. I'm glaring at a son that won't budge. It needs a kickstart. All the same faces, the same friends and family never apart. The only thing that ever moves is my girl's heart. Yeah. The fuck kind of song is that? The lyrics are lame as fuck. How about you... How about you never touch a guitar or a microphone ever again, bitch? How about you look in the mirror, bitch? How about you cut your hair, bitch? Yuta, come with me. Yuta, hey! Hey, stop recording. Put your phone away. I... fucking hate these children. <sighs> That's someone... Like, someone put all their effort into it. Like, still, of course, it's a 12-year-old boy. And it, that was still pretty heavy for a 12-year-old boy to uh, make a movie like that. Okay? Especially for a 12-year-old boy to make such a movie. And then they bash the boy. Like, w what were you expecting? Uh, Transformers? Because we we were talking about Michael Bay, but um, but anyway, like I don't know, I, that is just unnecessarily mean. I feel an aura of hostility <laughs> towards bad children. Yeah, I love how when I was reading this, I was also roasting the guy for bashing his film. <laughs> yeah, this was never an option. Uh, I got a commercial break for most of the time on Twitch. Thank you very much. Even in the middle of Elda's rant, it's about to blow up the hospital. It's about sending a message. Yeah, it's, it's not about the hospital. Yeah. About sending a message. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know. I'm partly responsible for not screening it beforehand. Still, you should know better than to make a movie like that. What the fuck does that mean? It's making a mockery of your mother's death. Are you fucking kidding me? So it's actually his mom who died. How do you- How is that making a mock- How the fu- <laughs> I- I- That's something that I fucking hate, okay? Another rant. Ah! That was the wrong button, sorry. <laughs> Is when teachers... 
when teachers just can't shut their fucking mouths. It's a muckery of his mom's death, bitch. Who the fuck are you to say that? Maybe that's how he deals with his mom's death. That's his actual mom in the movie. He wanted to share his feelings with the school. And you're like, hey, you shouldn't do that. It's silly. Are you fucking nuts? Are you nuts? You're taking an already ostracized child right now. And bashing them even more. Like they're already feeling bad about their heart being received with laughter by other children, by his peers. Which is already heartbreaking in a different way. You know, the mother's death is a heartbreak. And um, his heartbreak being shown, like this vulnerability, his emotions being shown to the school is being met with mockery and laughter and jokes and bashing. That's another heartbreak right there. And you, an adult, a teacher, who's supposed to be like a mentor for children that come to your institution, you're bashing that child, not just for exposing their emotions and basically talking about his real mother's death, but you're doing that on top of that child already getting ostracized and and bullied basically trampled on by his peers that is a different type of assholery and i fucking hate that because you see variations of such things happening in every fucking school and it, it's it's too much for me because there's children getting bullied, and when they tell the teachers, or the teachers first see that, but they ignore it. And then, they, when something happens, let's say the child fights back against his bullies, his or her bullies. And then that child gets in trouble. Or when the teachers want to be impartial, they say, Oh, both of you cause trouble, both of you are going to get detention or whatever, be suspended or whatever. That's not the way to go. Like, first, that bullying is getting ignored. Then when a child approaches you about that, you ignore that or don't help them. And then when they fight back on their own accord because they have no one, you punch them in the gut again with these types of words, with these punishments, these impartial punishments, or uh, trying to adhere to some type of justice. I, this gets me so mad. I hate adults like this. Not just teachers, but especially with teachers who have a type of responsibility as mentors to be there for children. Not to make them even more miserable. To pile on even more misery onto them after going through misery. It's, it's beyond me how teachers can be like that. And this teacher just made me so mad. I know I didn't read the entire page. But these words alone already make me so angry. That's just what I wanted to get rid of. Sorry for pressing the wrong button, but hey, at least I went Big Elder and talked about it. Let's read the chat. Um, saying react. I had a heart attack. <laughs> uh, my friend was clinically depressed as a kid, and his parents went through a divorce. I was his only friend throughout school. Basically, taught him and everything. He is very livid about schools because the teacher thought he is a slow guy or doesn't have attention, so they treated him with zero respect. I'm gonna get mad again. Oh. I'm gonna get mad again on stream. Uh, you're a good friend, yeah. I guess this is a commentary on how people think certain film has to have a certain feel. Like a film about his... Mother's death supposed to be sad and somber. 
even in uh, even institutions they ignore e into you I, I have this a lot I hate teachers I hate this a lot okay yeah yeah not so out there like bombing a hospital <laughs> American dude again it is now 4 a.m. here so I will now actually go to sleep see you next stream yeah please go to sleep and um, still thanks for coming um, see you next stream bye bye good night I hate bad teachers when teachers are good people they're the best yes when it's a bad teacher they're the worst yeah like they're supposed to be teaching children not pull them down and stuff like that yeah almost lost Elda because of big Elda button yeah <laughs> yeah sorry about that one uh anyway making a mockery of your mother's death why did you go and turn it into a movie that's just wrong why would you do that can you shut the fuck up? Maybe that's how he deals with it. Everyone has a different way of dealing with loss. Like, instead of invalidating his feelings, can you please talk to the other children who laughed at his feelings and tell them, hey, little bitches, his mom actually fucking died. And you're laughing. Maybe don't talk to the kid who's going through stuff and talk to the others that are super heartless towards that kid. Maybe do that. Why would you do that? Why would you be a fucking piece of shit? I had about a hundred hours of footage, so I edited it down so it would be easier to watch. Then I added some good sounding music and um, I just had a movie. Don't you feel bad for your late mother showing a video like that? Didn't you see that his mother wanted it? Like, who are you trying to uh, pay respect to here? Whose wishes are you trying to respect here, bitch? I hate this teacher so much. Do I feel bad? I, um, no. That ending, why did you have that explosion at the end? That was awesome, right? Um, excuse me, you're grabbing the child like that? <laughs> All right, bitch. All right. Do you think a person's death is awesome? What is wrong with you? Are you... What the fuck is wrong with you? I'm gonna go insane here on stream. You are not gonna teach a child who lost his mother and is sad about it how to be sad about his mother's death. And berate him for that. I am so mad right now because it's not just in this comic that we see that. Uh, we see that everywhere in life. But yeah. Is there a wrong way to deal with grief? A genuine question. No. Unless you're being like actually destructive, like towards yourself and others. Like for example, if you actually bombed a hospital, that would be a bad way to grief. Like because it's not good that you kill other people because your mother died and you're sad about it. And that's a bad way to grieve when you're harming other people for that. But other than that, everything is fair game. But yeah, it's going to be a long stream. Sorry about that. This is going to be a long stream because the manga gets so layered and complex the more it goes on. Yeah, this is going to last the entire fucking day, isn't it? Huh? Go honestly, this one shot deserves it. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Whoa! What did I think? The ending sucked. It made me sick to my stomach. Isn't that a good thing? I have serious doubts about your sense of morals. But isn't it, you know, one of my favorite directors, actually my favorite director of all, of all time, uh, Pak Chan-wook, he said with his movies, he doesn't just want to leave 
you with emotions. He wants you to leave the cinema feeling actually fucking beaten up. Like physically beaten up or physically sick. He wants you to feel some... To, to have a physical response to his movies. Not just like an emotional one, but a physical one too. So isn't it a good feedback when you hear, it made me sick to my stomach? That's a good feedback. And when someone is like, I have serious doubts about your sense of morals, because that means they thought about what is moral, what is right, and what is wrong. Like, at least they thought about that topic. So that's... I mean, they're saying mean things, but as a creator, this is good feedback, I would say, personally. I would say that's good feedback. Um... When I read this, I honestly thought he legit bombed the hospital. I got so confused, but of course it was edited. Yeah, for anyone who wants to check his work, the name is Pak Chan Wook. That's what I said. A lot of people don't take the time to understand each other for who they are, especially in schools. I speak from experience. I think everyone went to school. Um, after I generalize, um, but uh, really the school fails in this principle. Yeah, yeah. True. Yes, Pak Chan Wook Love. The Handmaiden is my favorite movie of all time. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. Decision to Leave uh, is coming out. Uh, it's coming out this year. I'm so. I, I had no idea there's another movie coming out. Okay, okay, okay. I'm hyped too now. Oh, it's been a while. But yes, everyone should watch all Pak Chan Wook movies. All of them. There's not that many of them. You can watch them. Um, but yeah, every work of fiction that incites any amount of genuine emotion in someone is a success to me. But when the emotion is annoyance, for example, I don't think that's a success. Or frustration, then I don't think it's a success. But, um, uh, yeah, as I said, when you have feedback like this, like physical response and, um, philosophical response right because morals uh, they're a philosophical topic and um sickness in your stomach that's a physical response so you got some good feedback my boy yuta that's good feed oh how did i turn the page yellow that's good feedback uh you kind of look like anya forger but grown up i have no idea who the fuck that is but at least i don't look like sasha gray anymore huh <laughs> He hasn't made a single film less than an 8 out of 10, in my opinion. Agreed. Agreed. Absolutely agreed. And that 8 out of 10 is just uh, sympathy... F uh, nah, it's, it's uh, Lady Vengeance. Lady Vengeance is that 8 out, out of 10. That's his weakest film. His weakest is an 8 out of 10. <laughs> I haven't heard of him, Pak Chan Wook, before. What are his movies like? I would really love to know his genre. It's what I described, basically. You don't just have an emotional response that is very powerful when you watch his movies. You have a physical one, too. A physical response. I especially, especially recommend Old Boy by Pak Chan Wook. I can watch that movie and I have... 20 times and still notice more things. It's perfection, in my opinion. I think that's the perfect movie. It's absolute perfection from start to finish. Everything about it. I can, there's not a single thing that I would nitpick. Nothing. Everything is perfect. Perfectly constructed from start to finish. The details. The protagonist-antagonist relationship and formation the the emotional journey that you go on to that too and the physical response that you have at the end of the movie and when you say yeah i don't want to watch this ever again that was too powerful and um i'm glad i experienced it once but i don't want to watch it any more like never again but then you watch it 20 more times uh honestly just watch 
old boy and um, go from there. Uh, Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance is another one that I watched once and I said, yep, never again, but now I think it's time to rewatch it. Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance, because it was so fucking good. It was so good. God damn, was it good. It, ugh, I just love Puck Chung-wook, but The Handmaiden is, is also so beautiful to look at, you know, aesthetically. But also the story is amazing. And also it's 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 political. Like there is um ideas, notions, nations, cultures basically anthropomorphized. Um it's um they're being shown in dialogue and through people. And that is fantastic too. It's so you just also have like a social and political message. But you also have a good story. You have to know a little bit about the, about the history of Korea and Japan and about their cultures to understand what's going on there. But, but still, to understand that layer of social and political commentary. If you, if you want to get rid of that, you still have a good story. A fantastic story. It's so good. But anyway, sorry for another tangent. Pak Chan-wook movies are films that make every other movie you watch seem like garbage. Thank you, Aka Kitsugami. Yes, that is true. Uh, I didn't really understand the point of The Handmaiden. Maybe his genre is not for me. No, Handmaiden is also different than all his other movies because it's basically a, a story. Like, it's layered. It's like, it's like a matryoshka. Like you know that the russian dolls that you open and then there's a smaller doll inside and then you and there's a smaller one and and you open them continuously until a smaller one comes out that's basically handmaiden you're watching it you're watching a story but then there's one layer unveiled and another layer and a plot twist after plot twist that makes everything you watched before look different it's um it's a matryoshka. That's the handmaiden. His other movies are not like that. They're not like that. But um, uh, the, the point of the handmaiden is, first of all, it was a good story, okay? And also, best queer movie out there. Just saying, best queer movie out there. But as I said, the historical, the cultural, the political messages, they're there. And they hit hard. And they're so true. They make you ponder as a Korean or a Japanese person should uh, ponder on that. Oh, that sounds really interesting. Definitely going to check it out later. Yes, do that. My favorite aspect of his films is how he blends brutality with serene beauty. Yes, 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 yes. There are moments that are borderline straight fantasy that give you a sense of melancholy. And yes, old boy is perfect. Yes, it is. Oh, it has gore in it? It doesn't have gore in it. No. And that makes me want to watch it more. Not in a weird way. I just like gore and stuff. No, it's not gory. No. A lot of gore, especially. It's not gory. Gore for me is when you see organs and, and, and uh, I don't know, blood and everything. Yeah, of course, some violence does happen, but it's not gory. Like, there is no inert spilling out. That's not gore for me. Uh, there's no flesh being and, and skin being torn off. It, it, it's not gore. There is violence, but it's not gore. Like, it borders gore, but uh, it's not gore. Um, I'm a cyborg, but that is okay. It's nice to... Wait, what? That's okay. It's nice to... I have never heard of that. Perfect analogy for how his movies recontextualize every other movie you watched. Yeah. So is Joint Security Area. I've never watched those. Am I not a, a real Pak Chan Wook fan? How come I've never watched those? <laughs> How come I've never heard of those? I'm a big fan of Shinji Ito horror manga. Yes, yeah, so I'm definitely interested in gore stuff. Definitely going to watch Old Boy. Oh, well, I guess Brutality then. Still very interested in it, though. Yeah. Have you seen Burning? Another Korean movie? Yes, but that was by... Dong, was it Dong? I forgot. But uh, yes, I have watched Burning. It was, 
it was such a slow burner. And like you're watching the movie, you're thinking nothing is happening, and then it's the end. But then you go to sleep, and the next day you're like still thinking about it. And then the day passes, and the next day you're still thinking about it. Like, I watched that movie with my mom. My mom only likes action movies, basically. Um, but yeah, uh, action thriller, stuff like that. Uh, but I watched that movie with her, and she was like, oh, that was kind of boring. But then, a week later, like, I, I don't know what I was doing. And she comes into my room, and she's like, you know what? That movie was good. I'm still thinking about it. Burning. That movie. That was still good, yeah. Also, Mother by Bong joon -ho. That's uh that that's a good movie too, in my opinion. It's um up there with old boy. But yeah. Uh Li Chang Dong. Okay, Li Chang Dong. Okay, I, I the Dong was in the wrong place. <laughs> uh, uh, Dong. Oh, stop it, Li Chang Dong. I I misplaced the Dong. <laughs> Korean movies are just so good. I agree. Ever since I watched Parasite, yeah. Now already, I uh, respect for Korean movies got ultimately higher. Yeah, it's a very good movie. Mother by Bong Joon Ho. Yes. And that's one of my favorites. You guys should watch Ichi the Killer too. It's goofy as fuck, but highly entertaining. Yeah, it's the gory one, right? I know which one. Burning by Yi Chang Dong. Yeah. Oh, you like Korean filmmaking? Have you heard of that obscure series called Squid Game? <laughs> Stop. Love Exposure is an 11 out of 10 movie. A must watch Japanese comedy drama. Okay, I've never heard of that. I'm gonna have to put it on my list. And I will put it on my list right now on stream. Yeah, we're not getting anywhere with this comic. We're just 28 pages in and we're still... And we, we've we streamed for almost two hours. Okay. Uh, love exposure. Japanese movie. Great. Oh, I loved Silenced and The Call, that's sure. Uh, I didn't like The Call. I, I, I know everyone praises it, but I don't know, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. But maybe I'm gonna have to rewatch it, but I didn't like The Call. Uh, no, not The Call. It was The Wailing, The Wailing that I didn't like. The Wailing. That's the one I didn't like. I, I've never heard of um, Silenced and The Call, that's sure. That Korean movies are something else. Um, another movie. I think the English title is Bewitched, Bede Bedeviled, Bedeviled. That's a hard to watch movie too. Bedeviled, but um, the Korean movie translates to something like uh, the case files of, and then you have the name. I forgot the name. Uh, but. Uh, Bedeviled. That's a hard to watch movie too. It's it's really sad and really disgusting and brutal. But yeah. Anyway, <laughs> are any of Park Chan Wook movies on Netflix? By the way, I don't know on Netflix, but they are on Amazon Prime. That's ten percent of the manga. Uh, by using complicated math calculations, that was. This will be a 10-hour stream. Sorry about that. What a way to start a vacation. Have you read Dandaran manga yet? Uh, Fujimoto rec recommended it and praised it for its story. No, not yet. It's four hours, so now uh, that going into it... Uh, what? It's the fastest four hours you'll ever experience. It's currently 6 p.m. for me right now, Asia. Yeah, I'm gonna be here until morning. Oops. One hour and three. Whoa! What the fuck? I didn't. There's a some European chick bot? What the fuck? I had no idea that existed and that you could look up like what page we are on and how many. Like how, how long we've been streaming? Okay. 
One hour for 28 pages. Well, fuck. I had no idea that was possible on YouTube. Oh yeah, Sasha Gray, that's what you remind me of today, Elda. <sighs> I hear that often. I should have called the channel not some European chick, but um, some... Who the fuck is typing? The fuck kind of bot is that? I am I am legit horrified right now. What the fuck? Epi, what the fuck are you doing? How is that possible? Anyway, I shouldn't have named the channel some European chick. I should have named it um, Sasha Gray Prototype or 2.0 or something. <laughs> Prototype because the the real Sasha Gray obviously looks better. So the prototype is first like a rough rough draft, and then the actual product is is the finished version. <laughs> but two point oh, if I'm because I'm younger, and I came afterwards and I'm, I'm leeching out uh, of her popularity. And so yeah, oh no, the bot has become sentient. Who is Sasha Gray? Google it. Go Google it. Put yourself in your mom's shoes. Are you fucking kidding me, bitch? You're despicable. You're insane. You people disgust me. You're children and I'm disgusted. Why? Why would you turn that into a movie? So you can feel uncomfortable too, bitch. I know you wanted to probably watch a movie about puppies and sunshine and rainbows. But actually, you know, people die, and classmates can go through loss. So I'm sorry that I made you uncomfortable with my mom's death and my emotions. But am I despicable for it? Or are you despicable for bashing me for my mom's death? I am... I'm just so fucking mad. Glad I'm not the only one who thought about the Sasha Gray thing. Yeah. You know, Sasha Gray had a long-lost European sister. It was one bad movie. Ha 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 ha. It was sh shit. You're all shit. You're all full of shit. I fucking hate this. Why would you make s someone feel bad about that? About what they created? That is so mean. It's so mean to... To destroy someone's hobby like that and passion and their the lab the, the result of their labor that is so mean. My mom died too last year. That's why I can't forgive you, but not for turning it into a movie. That's not the problem. Why'd you add the explosion at the end? Hey y'all. This one goes out to all the people who made fun of me. If you're watching this, then I'm already dead. I've committed suicide. Yeah, you made the boy do that. This is why I hate people who are mean to other people. Especially en masse. How can you just bully someone for what came straight out of their heart? He exposed his entire heart. To you all and you trampled on it so this suicide is on you you basically killed a boy every one of you killed a boy this is why i say violence maybe i should do that no matter how uh long or short the rant is but this is why i say violence is really hard to measure because what would you count as violence? Is it when you are physically committing an act of violence onto someone else and they're sustaining an injury? Is it when you're psychologically abusing someone so they sustain an injury, maybe do it to themselves? Uh, is it not violence when you abuse them emotionally but they don't hurt themselves? What if if you what is if you 
accidentally kill someone um, by, I don't know, uh, not looking when they, uh, w when you're driving or something, like when you accidentally kill someone. Uh, is that violence too? When you didn't have the intention of hurting someone? Is it violence when you and a bunch of others are being um, really mean and uh, to someone or isolating them so that they commit suicide? So you're basically bullying a person or excluding them from the community and uh and they commit suicide is that not violence because you didn't physically like you didn't actively do anything to them physically even though bullying can involve physical um abuse too but what is violence really also if you accidentally kill someone like maybe because Technology changed over time. The things that did kill people previously, for example, when you, I don't know, you were cutting wood and a child accidentally, I don't know, gets their hand uh, in between you and the axe and then it's just their finger being cut off. But because of bacterial infection, they die a lot later, but they die because of that wound. Was that the result of violence, because now when you do that same thing, it, it's just that the child will lose a finger, but they would not lose their lives. So, for example, how, how could you measure violence? How would you define violence? In my opinion, it's... Um, even if the intent is not for them to, for example, harm themselves, but when you're actually causing harm and... Um, in a physical, of course, uh, physical abuse, and in an emotional, like emotional abuse, uh, way, when you're, when you're basically um, not taking the safety, mental health, emotional stability, and and contentness of a person into account, and um, actively deteriorating their um, state of being like if emotional or physical the intent it can be that because a lot of bullies they say they were just having fun they didn't mean like they they regret the bullying once there is harm like for example suicide done when their victim commits suicide then they regret it they say it wasn't their intention for them to kill themselves but what was your intention? It was to have fun. But when that fun is not, is not being perceived by the victim as fun, so basically disregarding their state and actively doing something to deteriorate that state, I think that is what is violence. Maybe that definition is not correct. Maybe my understanding of it is not correct maybe because i haven't really been thinking that much about it i'm just thinking that acts like bullying count as violence um so yeah i think measuring violence defining violence is really difficult but um i would say this for example the the boy's message uh is um is a result of someone else's labor. Uh, but yeah, that's, I guess, all I wanted to say. Is so Sometimes it doesn't matter what your intention is. Maybe you just wanted to teach the child a lesson by telling the child that their movie is bad, that they lack morals, that you're disgusted with them. Maybe your intention was to set them straight onto the right path but it backfired so it, it doesn't really matter what your intention is as long as you're physically and emotionally like when you're responsible for their physical and emotional deterioration that is violence especially 
if you see that what you're saying, like what, what effect what you're doing has on that other person, then, uh, and you continue doing it, then that is a um, special type of negligence that uh, you're absolutely responsible for. But yeah, let's go back. Let's let's read the chat. And pedagogics, I learned that violence, be it um, verbal or physical, is defined by the intentional harm of someone else. Basically, every action that's intended to harm someone. See, this is where I say it doesn't matter because a lot of people don't, especially bullies, don't really intend to harm them. They're just having fun, but they don't realize what effect that has on the victim. Or they're intentionally uh, ignoring the effects of their actions. They probably don't want the victim to uh, commit suicide because that will make them realize that what they've been doing was really bad. So the intention is to have fun until a certain degree. At past a certain degree, uh, when the victim commits suicide, for example, that's when uh, they know they've overstepped. So accidentally someone wouldn't... Uh, uh, harming someone uh, wouldn't be defined as violence. Uh, yeah, I, I would say, for if we take the example of the axe and harming your child, and it wasn't your intention, it was an accident. That That is, I would say, accident. It wasn't an... Um, an action that was also done over a period of time. It just happened now and maybe never again. Now, if you do that several times, like do that to your child, well, yeah, that, that is violence. <laughs> because there's something... Like, how how does that type of action repeat itself? Like, <laughs> to accidentally cut your kid's finger off all the time. Like, there's something wrong with that. If that happens um, repeatedly. But, um, yeah, when something happens... Um, First of all, it can be an off, like a, like a one-time thing, but it also can be a repeated thing. But yeah, the intention, yes, of course, but also what effects it has. And you uh, specifically ignoring or underestimating the effects. Um, despite seeing, like getting feedback from your victim that this is, like, that they're not enjoying the situation. Uh, and also because of, you know, our moral standards. So you're basically, even though you're raised to be nice to everyone and you're not doing that, you're doing the exact opposite. So basically going against morals, like knowingly, that too. But yeah, an accident is an accident. But um, um, I would say just counting the intention, I think, is not quite enough. But yeah, violent deaths when we're talking about that, it is, for example, um, something that is, um, uh, that also occurs uh, through accidents, like, let's say, car crashes, um, let's say, um, axe cutting off someone, I don't know. Uh, for example, um, th this one couple that did a, a shooting social experiment or whatever they filmed each other the i think the lady was holding a book or something a fat book and the guy was shooting at her and the bullet went through the book and into her or it was the other way around and the partner got killed that is a violent death and they are punished for it that person who committed that crime but it wasn't intentional the intention wasn't there but yeah, so this is what I mean. It's it's pretty tricky uh, to measure violence or to define it. Like it can get pretty tricky. Um, so thoughtlessness can't be defined as violence to me. They're saying hurtful things, sure, but unless the intention to harm Yuta isn't there, it can't be seen as violence to me. Then that is, then I yeah I I don't agree. And I think you have a very narrow view of violence, in my opinion. Bullying, on the other hand, has very much the intention to inflict damage. Uh, not at all. Like, really. 
especially when bullying happens not by one person but by a group of people they really don't um like they're just making fun of someone uh letting off some steam but uh the intention is never there for the victim to actually um harm themselves or to show the results of the bullying as um as sick as that sounds but yeah someone who bullies someone is insecure himself yeah i think i saw a definition that it is changing something or someone when that thing a person doesn't want to change physically or mentally uh yeah uh, yeah Th that's that that's a little closer to what i would say but accidents are not accounted for in that definition either like, taking the axe example, you change the child's uh, physical state and probably mental state too because now the child will probably be scared of you for some time and when they see you with an axe again, they're gonna f maybe scream. <laughs> so you change them against their will, but it wasn't, it wasn't your intention. So intention still has a play in that, uh, but also it's not enough. Intention does play a role, but it's not the only role, in my opinion. Emotional violence is definitely way worse than physical. Um, I don't know, because physical violence uh, has an emotional effect too. Uh, if it's physical, the scars can be cured and can be fixed, while emotional can uh, scar for life and even lead to actual death. Well, yeah, but physical can too. As I said, it's not just that you're receiving a few blows from your dad every time he gets drunk and it's just the blows that are uh, causing some bruises and the bruises are going to fade. No, it does some emotional things to you too. Uh, the one kid doubting Yuta's morals, for example, is verbally violent to him. Yeah. Uh, emotion is a strong weapon to use on people. Yeah. Physical abuse is seen as unequivocally wrong. Whereas if you cause verbal abuse, it is somehow more acceptable in society. No, that's not true. It's fun in games for laughs. No, it's not uh, more acceptable. It's because uh, the borders, just like how Akakitsugami has a different definition for violence or would see a child permit, uh, uh, committing some acts as not violent, whereas I would, it's because it's blurry. The lines are blurry. Which is why some things are permitted, not because we permit them because we're okay with it, but because we don't know how to, like, how to categorize the actions of th this verbal abuse. But um, in a lot of cases it is to normalize because words are not visible, so you can't see a visible effect. You can't hurt someone with something visible. Just like climate change, it's not, it, it's not a physical visible monster. But it is impeding doom. But people don't take it so seriously because... Exactly because they can't see it. Because it's not a physical threat, a material threat. Like, I don't know, let's say a comet. A meteor uh, that's approaching us. A climate change is like a creeping invisible monster. It, it's like a disease. And um, you can't see a disease. It's It's made up of tiny and millions of tiny germs that have an effect on the body. Outside of the body, these germs, these cells, these bacteria and whatever, they're not a threat, but in the body, they're a threat. And um, when something is invisible, it, it's just harder to pinpoint uh, what is what and how you can affect it in a way that it goes away <laughs> or that it's stopped or where where the uh, damage is not now visible but it, it's uh, visible in uh, at later times or it, it changes symptoms and so on so it's really hard to pinpoint something whereas a bruise for example it's visible like you saw the impact of the fist and you saw um the bruise happening on um, a specific area under the skin like that is a lot easier to pinpoint whereas uh verbal abuse it's 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 really hard 
um, for people to um, categorize what is um, what is going overboard and what is still fine. Like there's not a clear line for everyone. Just individually, we decide what is okay and what is not. And also because um, you can't see that monster, like as I said with the climate change example, you can't see it physically. Um, silent voice will be a good example. I kind of opa. Kind of confused. What can I type? Wait, what? Silent voice <clears throat> is a great example. Yeah, one of my favorite anime. I, I read the manga at the time, and then a few years later, the mm, the movie came out. Watched the movie with my mom, and she cried, <laughs> and I cried too. <laughs> <clears throat> Everybody be and be typing paragraphs. So you don't need to. Bullying is a joke taken too far. Yeah. Hey, what's up? Caught it live today. Yeah, it was the guy who got shot. The wait, what? Mm. My view of violence isn't narrow. Pedagogic's definition of it is, if anything, but definitions change over time too. Maybe at the time that was over ten years ago with you, that was the definition. And maybe right now it's a different one. As I said, it's it's not clearly defined. Like, there's debates about definitions. You, you don't just use dictionary definitions of anything. Like, you don't do that. Like, uh, once you're in academics, you're going to realize that a dictionary definition isn't, like, the truth. Or, like, a, a, a defining characteristic of one study. Because there's... Every definition, almost, is... Uh, especially one that is, like, a concept... Every concept is uh, debated on um, by uh, lots of different people, not just in philosophy, but like, um, for example, as a sociology student in, in sociology, we had this topic of violence, too. And in our course at the time where we discussed violence, there were um, even psychology students and uh, philosophy students. And... Um, we all discussed, like, how do you define, count, measure violence? Because we were talking about which period in human history was most violent in, in our area of Europe. And it turns out it's really hard to measure what violence is. Is it uh, the cause or the effect? Like, what... Where does it start? Where does it end? And the same thing with the pedagogics definition. It's not a pedagogics definition. It's probably just a dictionary definition and that a pedagogue used and that you learned at the time. But um, dictionary definitions aren't everything. Like, everything is um, still discussed. And um, you. it's more like you bring up several different pedagogics uh, um experts and they give their own two cents and definitions but yeah it's really hard is what i'm trying to say um but i would say that definition that you used maybe i said it wrong and i said you have a narrow definition of um violence it's, it's not that i'm saying that you i'm just saying the definition you used is too narrow in my opinion because just counting intention and nothing else is too little uh um, and not counting in tension is, is also too little to pertain to the discussion. Um, but yeah, are you going to read the original Nayuta one shot? Yeah, but maybe in my private time only because there is no official English release of it, as far as I know. Uh, some people feel like they have to give their opinion, even though it's not that important. Oh, yeah, the kids, the cruel kids, but yeah. Uh, both type of violence are horrible. Emotional uh, one cannot be seen a lot of times. What I mean was actual death, as in like suicide. Of course, physical can cause death too. But yeah, but the physical can also cause emotional thing. Yeah, both violence are, are just terrible, really. Yeah. Every time I comment my opinion, I feel like I'm waiting for the uh, teacher to check it. And uh, the teacher is some European chick. Sorry about that. All true. Shit, that sounds like a really interesting course. I hate my lack of education. 
I learned something today. Thanks. <laughs> Some people just want to watch the world burn. <laughs> After hearing you speak for like an hour and a half, I can say that you're a very educated person. I'm I, I'm sorry for the I I keep saying I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep the tangents short, but I don't. <laughs> Every time, it's insane. Just a suggestion though. Can you make your opinion short and clear? Sometimes your opinion is kind of similar, and we get your point. Yeah. I yeah, no, nah, I can't do that. I'm just too stupid to do that. No, I'm sorry. I'm gonna disappoint you. No, nah, sorry. And also sometimes like things are not simple. Things are just complex. And and I'm also not someone who can explain things simply. So I make that sound even more complex than it actually is, and I drag it out for a long time so it sounds more complex. But uh, yeah. Sorry about that, but I can't do that because I'm I, I'm just who I am. Um. Anyway, uh, I like the tangents though. Don't worry. Okay, so you can engage more audience while reading the whole manga. I'm subscribed for the tangents. I would compliment you though, but I wouldn't mean much coming from me. We're here for good quality discussions. I'm here for the manga reading. End up listening to someone with good opinions about life. I mean, I'm glad that we can discuss things and exchange opinions, too. Uh, you can't avoid what's inevitable, Elda. The rant is what this channel is. It is. Yeah, yeah, it is at this point. We are waiting for our teacher to read our thoughts on society, world, and philosophy. These things take time, okay? For those who have studied sociology, you should know that symbolic violence is one heavy hit. Uh, yeah. So, as I said, violence, very hard to define. <laughs> We're only on page 32. <laughs> it has many facets uh, to it. Has many components. <laughs> Very hard to measure is my point, but here you can see the measured results, okay? That's all I wanted to say. A boy committing suicide in response uh, to bullying, that is something that you can't ascribe to violence, okay? <laughs> That's all I wanted to say, but I dragged it out so much. I'm sorry. Now I trust the guy who said we're having an eight hour stream. You should always trust the people who say we're streaming like for 10 hours or so. They know me. They know how this channel works. <laughs> I already corrected myself to 20 hours. Sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, if you're watching this, then I'm already dead. I've committed suicide. By jumping off the roof of the hospital where my mom died. I put the entirety of my middle school life into making that movie. Do you guys have any idea how it feels to have it get mocked? Exactly. I feel so bad for the boy. Are you thinking, why would you kill yourself over that? If that's how you feel, you deserve to die too. For a little boy, for a teenage boy, 12, 13, 14, he said his entire middle school life he put into that. He has a lot of wisdom in him. Uh, he's a very wise little boy. Didn't uh, expect that from a child, but yeah. Did you finish the manga yet? No. No offense, but you sound like the kind of person who always gets the maximum words in an essay. Uh, no, nope, not yet. It's about that. Oh my god. Two hours. Almost two hours and only 32 pages. I'm gonna- I'm insane. I'm insane. I'm sorry, Fujimoto. I'm sorry about that. Um, how long was the longest stream on this channel? Bro, I don't know. Probably the Muta stream. When Muta died, I think that one was the longest stream on my channel. Until now! <laughs> oh. Dad, when you find this video, I have a request. Please don't be sad. Your poor dad, he lost his... He lost his wife and now his child. 
I, this is... The world is cruel. I feel so bad for children who feel the only way they can escape the cruelty of the world is by taking their own lives. They shouldn't have any reason to feel that. Please don't be sad. Show this video to the jerks who made fun of me. Make them remember me for the rest of their lives. This world is filled with death. Memento mori. This is Yuta signing off. Goodbye. I feel so bad for the boy. So bad. Oh my god, please don't. You gonna jump? What? You, you watched him climb on that railing and you're like... Are you gonna do it or not? Bitch, the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> if you want to die, don't do it here. You'll hurt the hospital's reputation. The sociologist of me wants to talk about the suicide, like the method of uh, which suicide to pick. Uh, wants to talk about just suicide in general now too, but I know that tangent would be super fucking long. Let's move on. I just know there's a lot behind why he chose to do it at a hospital and why he wanted to die by jumping. There's a cultural component, a societal one. Uh, it's, a, it's not just because um, that's a random thought. He's, he just chose this on random. No, there, there's actual reasons behind this that uh, not even the boy is aware of. Uh, so yeah, just wanted to say that. Kasapia. Okay, Papa. Epi. Hi, Renzolution Real. Hi. You'll hurt the hospital's reputation. Go die at the hospital near the station. The doctors there are total jerks. Do it there. Also, if you're serious about dying, the money in your wallet. Huh? Wait a sec. No way. Are you by any chance? Yuta Ito from Dead Explosion Mother? Uh, yeah, that's me. Come with me. Huh? She saved a boy right now. See, when a hundred people tell him that what he's doing is shit and that he is shit, and one person comes in and says no, then that can change their life course forever. We just need one person who is like that. Every one of us needs one person like that. But yeah. What the fuck? Where the fuck are you bringing him? The hell? The hell? Are they just watching a movie right now? She just saved a boy. But also only because he was the one that she wanted him to be. But yeah, he just needed to hear, hear the words of appreciation from someone. Watch Fight Club. Huh? <laughs> nice! I didn't realize. That they're watching Fight Club. Uh, I refuse to call this one shot anything but cinema. Yeah, I love the pacing of this manga. Same. Especially if it takes like two hours to read 45 pages. Good pacing. The characters are watching Fight Club. In fact, they're watching Fight Club. I got it. Why are you showing me a movie? No talking during movies. Who are you? Is this place yours? 
I'll tell you if you keep quiet for the next nine hours. That's a lot. Bitch, where are you gonna pee and poop? Do you have enough water with you? Stay hydrated. Yeah, okay, we got it. They're, they're watching Fight Club. I got it! <laughs> And no, it's not my place. We're trespassing in an abandoned building. I brought the projector. She also brought a lot of books. Or are they movies? Stacked in the background. <clears throat> yeah, just accepted it. Okay. Yeah, okay. Thanks for the charger. It's 2 a.m. I'm leaving. Uh, why are you recording me? Bigger question. The movies were good and all, but who are you and why'd you show them to me? I didn't tell you yet? No, you didn't. You haven't seen that many movies, have you? I've seen the movies they play on TV. That's not nearly enough. You have to watch more. Why? Because you can't make a film everyone will like unless you've watched a ton of them. Oh, great. Are you one of those people who have a problem with my movie? Oh, I had plenty of problems with it, but it had an edge you rarely see, and the surprises outnumbered its faults. It's an immature work for sure. And despite it, running for close to 20... Thought someone called me. Despite it running for close to 20 minutes, I could watch it all without getting bored. And the way it blurred the line between fact and fiction for me, that was a good puzzle. What's this about? You still haven't answered me. Your movie was super awesome. Love it. Love it. Yes. She's a good one. I like her. Also, I like her uniform. But it was just as frustrating as it was good. I was the only person in that gym who was crying. Everyone else used it as material for their jokes. And that really pissed me off. That's why you're going to make another movie. From tomorrow on, for the next year, you're going to increase your input by watching loads of movies. Then in the next year, you'll shoot a movie and show it at the school festival. Next time, don't you want to make them all bawl their eyes out? I like the sound of that. Love that. I love their friendship. Beautiful. He was saved. That's how you save someone. By showing them you appreciate them and what they do. <coughs> uh, I think the uniform is a reference to Neon Genesis event. There's lots of uniforms that look like this, especially... I've, I've, yeah. Some um, uniforms look like this. Um, it kind of looks similar, but it could just be that Japanese cool uniforms just look like... Not all of them, but some do. Yeah. Like, there's different styles of uniforms in Japan. And this is one of them. You see it um, more in girls' high schools, for example, or middle schools, doesn't matter. Or, like, private institutions. But, but you can also probably see it in, like, a public school, too. It's just that there's different styles, and this uniform is just one of those styles. Um, when she said she liked his work, it reminded me of Kyomoto revealing that she liked Hujino's comic in Look Back. Yeah. Again, this theme of you just need one person in the entire world that understands you. And that is enough. In fact, there's a line which Eddie says, which reminds me of a real-life incident, okay. Is in Makima had a child? I'll be your manager. 
Don't worry. I'm confident I watch more movies than anyone in this town. Okay, I think I get it now. But who are you anyway? <laughs> I'm Eddie. Put her there? Yeah. I like this. The stars are out. We're back, folks. Dad, I'm home. Duh. Oh, welcome home. <laughs> We're dad. Well, be glad he woke you up in the middle of the night to tell you he's home. Be glad you heard that he's home. But yeah, um... Wait, what did he say? Oh, yeah, yeah. Mr. IP grabber from Reddit brought me here. What the fuck? <laughs> but glad to see you here from Reddit. <laughs> you, ugh. You guys, did you know life is beautiful, bright, and pure? This is so beautiful to see. To anyone considering suicide, don't throw away your, if, throw your life away. Good boy. We all die one day. You should give life a try until your number comes up. Wishing you all well. This is Yuta signing off. Thanks. Goodbye. That was a good life lesson. And thank God he received a life lesson. During class, I want you to summarize the five movies we watched yesterday in only one sentence each. Once you've managed that, break their stories down into exposition. Rising, uh, rising action, climax, and resolution. In a way, you can explain them to me. I'll listen to your answers after school. If I do that, I'll be able to make a good movie? This is how they do it in Hollywood. Don't you trust Hollywood? Honestly, no, but <laughs> I think Yuta here wanted to commit suicide because of what the other kids told him. I think he just wanted to suicide to be part of his work. No. No. I don't think so. It's just that filming has become part of his personality ever since his mom asked him to. And him filming his suicide and sending out the message to taunt and haunt um, his bullies, basically. Um, it was just... Uh, it was just part of the suicide, not part of his work. And there was a literary movement in Japan during the late Taisho, beginning of Showa, called Uraiha. The authors were... Decadence and often use suicide as a commentary on their art. Maybe a reference to that. Uh, suicide, especially in Japan, as, as I said, uh, we could go into suicide, especially suicide in Japan, uh, and have a long ass tangent about that. But we are not going to do that. Just know. Uh, hold on, I need to take a sip. <clears throat> Just know that the suicide, as a complementary to the work, was still about the message of trying to show society, hey, this is what you made me do. Like, basically the same intention. You said you liked Eddie and Yuta's friendship. Just read the manga's title. Goodbye, Eddie. Can you shut the fuck up? Shut up. Epi, you don't need to delete the the message. I first of all I saw it. Second of all, I knew it because of the title. I don't need to read this. I know what it's about. It's goodbye, Eddie. It's about videos. We saw in the beginning he's filming his mother. And the filming is continuing. Like we see her from his perspective the entire time. Epi, it's not a spoiler. I have a brain. Don't worry. I I, I just told the person to shut the fuck up because Right now, I'm enjoying their friendship. I don't want to be reminded of what I'm already suspecting is going to happen. It's basically that we're this entire manga is his movie about Eddie. 
So no need to delete the the message. The title doesn't give away anything, but fucking hell. Happy was distracted from laughing at my meme, sorry. I need to take a sip. Drinks the whole bottle. <laughs> anyway. Uh during class, I want you to Opa. Don't you trust Hollywood? And after that, in the last scene, the protagonist is able to move forward with a positive attitude. The end. Did I do that right? So, I guess that's the, the best I can expect at the start. I'll accept it. Come on, what's with that? So, oh wait, what? Ah, let's buy dinner at a convenience store. After school, we'll watch three movies minimum every day at that spot. Poor. Is she really gonna eat all that? It's not like I'll put on weight anyway. Okay. Okay. Wish I had your metabolism. Bye. Meet me here again tomorrow at 9 a.m. Sharp. Wait, 9 a.m. Huh? We're watching movies on days off school too? What, you don't want to? You should be glad you get to spend all day with a babe like me. If you have... <laughs> I like her. I like her attitude. If you have an extra curricula in the way, then quit it. Kill nutrition. I like that they're watching all different kinds of movies and you see it reflected and how they're sitting, how they're posing, how their facial expressions are shown. They're watching a Pak Chan Wook movie here. <laughs> or a horror or gore movie or something. They could be watching a French movie here. Probably Amélie Poulain or something. <laughs> here they're watching... I don't know. What's a good comedy? Uh, that's a sad one, huh? Sad and maybe weird one, like weird where you're like, hmm, the fuck? I don't like this person. I don't like this character and what they're doing. Uh, uh huh, uh huh. Yeah, this could be. This could be. Uh, this could be old boy because look at how satisfied she is and how fucked up he looks. Th this is me whenever I show <laughs> whenever I show old boy to someone. I'm like this. I'm enjoying their uh, the, the other person uh, getting fucked up by the movie. <laughs> I just said that because I thought you would be uh, really sad after it. Wait, what? What? I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. In the chat. Wait, what? Call me by your name, where? Oh, it is! <laughs> it is! Hey, nice! <laughs> I didn't notice. Let's look at these. A little more. Girl Nutrition, never heard of it. Yeah, this is Call Me By Your Name. I don't know, this one? In the room is a classic, yeah. I was kneeling on the floor trying to comprehend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Akakatsugami is my... is one of my victims. That's Call Me By Your Name for sure. Love Fujimoto for that, yeah. Oh, look at them! Look at them here! Oh! <laughs> There's a Jackie Chan movie there. Yeah, I know, but I don't know which one. This one here. I don't know which one this is. Look at them! Oh my! The way they're bonding is really cute. But you have to once again showing he's not a cringe-ass homophobe. He Excuse me, he's not, nah, he's totally, totally a leftist. 
Trust me. I want to, and I recognize my kind. I'm sorry, but you can't make social commentary include, like, representative, like, of, of specific groups of people in your works and, 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 and think that he's, like, a right-wing type of person? No. No. You actually like cliched stuff, don't you? I ask because you cried during the heroine's death scene. What a shallow analysis. I cried because the story resonated with my own life. Also, don't you have this habit of making a low-key peace sign whenever characters score a win? Maybe. He was more watching her than the movies, huh? <laughs> when they win, he, she's making a peace sign. Well, you say, oh, yeah, every time there are nipples on the screen. <laughs> Imagine watching a movie with someone and every time there's a nipple, he's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it sounds like they're having a good time with each other. Honestly, that's that's really nice. Uh, your movie, oh, wait, uh, Yuta, become a filmmaker. His mom probably, oh. She influenced him to- Why are you using the, the bot that I didn't even know existed, Epi? Just, Epi, use your own account. Why are you using the bot? I have no idea what's going on. In fact, Elda does that too. Watching Handmaiden was funny. <laughs> Stop it! Stop exposing me. Anyway. Uh, well, you say, oh, yeah, every time there are nipples on screen, do not do too. I wouldn't be that crude. You sure you aren't uh, saying it unconsciously? I don't. Really, I don't say it. Oh, no, you say it all right. Do not do too. Do not do too. <laughs> Cute. Oh, yeah. See? See what? Nothing. No, really, what? Never mind! <laughs> I love this! I love this! I love Fujimoto and his comedy. It's- it's so great! That's my dad, except he just stares at me as if I'm su supposed to not look at boobs on the screen at the age of 20. <laughs> I love this. I'm enjoying myself. What? Come on, tell me. Forget it. It's nothing. It has to be something, right? What is it? You're freaking me out. Be quiet. It's bugging me so much I can't focus on the movie. Shut up already. I love them. They're having such a good time with each other. Love it so much. Every time when we watch movies with my parents where there's a nude or sex scene, parents be looking at us like we directed the movie. <laughs> it's because they're not supposed to look at boobs and then screen at the edge. <laughs> Yeah, he is writing realistic teens, yeah. <laughs> I think you're really, uh, you're ready to plot out your next movie. Plot it out? What's that? It's deciding the basic outline of the story before you write the screenplay. Oh, huh? And I'm coming up with it, with this? No, duh. Hey, like, wouldn't it be better for someone else to write it? You could come up with a better story than I could, Eri. Eddie. You watch more movies than me. It has to be you. Why? I want to watch your movie. Cause I'm in love. <laughs> He's flabbergasted. Did you just confess to me? No, you idiot. I'm in love with your movies. 
Besides, if I made the movie, it wouldn't be a school festival rematch. Oh, right. Oh. Oh, yeah. Here, I'll give you a potato stick, so go think up a plot. So, what do you think? Hmm? It's... how can I put this? Average? Come up with something else. It's because his last movie came from his heart. This one is just... Making a movie for the sake of making a movie. Oh, don't tell me she's gonna give him material. In order for him to make a movie. Just like his last one. Please don't tell me that's what's gonna happen. In order to inspire him, she's gonna go out of her way to... Give him... Some inspiration. Don't do that. Too normal. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm Boring. Boring. Average. It's not bad, but it's not good either. Bring me something else. Not quite right. I give up. I surrender. I cry, uncle. Blah, rah. Ah, my heart's a slushy mess at this point. I can't even tell what's good or not anymore. Well, I can, so stop worrying. Write with confidence. Why are you standing so far away? <laughs> you know, I always meant to ask, what exactly did you like about my movie? You're the only person in the world who says it's good. Everyone else called it crappy so much that even I don't know what I liked about it anymore. That's so sad. And that's also reflective of what happens to you when you get bullied, like for just you, not for a, something that you created, just you don't do anything, you're chilling, you're breathing air, and people find that offensive enough in, to bully you. You're gonna think like, yeah, actually, why should I be happy with myself? Like, why should I exist? I thought I was an okay person, but maybe I suck so much like that this bullying is warranted. You forget why you like yourself or why you like life when you get bullied too much. Yeah. <clears throat> First of all, the part where you run away from the hospital. In your movie, the plot progressed uh, like a touching story. But seriously, asking a middle school-aged son to record his own mother's death, isn't that just cruel? So when you ran away from the hospital as it exploded, it felt cathartic to me. The next thing that moved me uh, was how beautifully you always shot your mother. If it were me, I'd be really happy having someone capture me that beautifully. Also, I like your character. He's good. Even though your mother was the one in the title, you were the most likable character in the movie. Yeah. So in your next movie, I don't want to see someone else's story. I want to see your story. Aww. Aww. Dad, when you think of me, what's the first thing that comes to mind? I'd say you're all about movies? Uh-huh. Movies, I guess. And when you think about my movies, what comes to mind? Mm, explosions? Yeah, maybe explosions. <laughs> Kinda cute. Ever since you were little, you always uh, sprinkle a pinch of fantasy into everything. A pinch of fantasy? That's right. I like when, uh, like when you drew me in kindergarten, you gave me a dragon's face. That time we took a family trip to the zoo, you were talking to the giraffe the entire time. <laughs> so cute. Oh, hey, now that I think about it, how come you're recording right now? <laughs> I love this. What are they watching right now? Is it John Wick? What are they watching right now? Can someone tell me? <laughs> So the protagonist's mom buys him a smartphone. Then she tells him, I'm sick and I'm going to die. So fill me until my dying breath. 
Then part way through the movie, wait, isn't that the same story as your last movie? There's more. The protagonist couldn't bring himself to film his mother's death. Then he makes a crappy movie and gets ragged on big time for it. So our wounded protagonist decides to jump to his death from the hospital roof. Then when he gets up to the roof, enter Vampire Girl. The protagonist gets abducted and taken to th this building. Just when she he thinks she's going to drink his blood, she makes him watch a bunch of movies. And then the vampire orders the protagonist to make a movie. Right. After that, the two of them watch tons of movies, come up with a plot, and... And I haven't come up with the rest yet. Come up with it right now. Hmm. I like that. And this is cute. The protagonist's problem probably isn't the fact that his films got made fun of. Maybe it's that he didn't record his mother's death. And that's it. The truth is, the protagonist regrets running away. And then... And then, yeah, the vampire actually does have long to live. She's lived for a thousand years, but she's about to die from an illness or something. <laughs> Don't make her die! Despite living for a thousand years, she's afraid of being forgotten. So the vampire wants the protagonist to shoot a movie she'll be in. So that's all just repeating the same thing. As they shoot the movie, the protagonist and the vampire fall in love. But the vampire is growing weaker and weaker. Finally, I film the vampire's death and their love story is over. Having filmed the death, the thing he couldn't do for his mother, the protagonist regains the will to live and the confidence to make movies. The end. Or what the fuck? I would say don't do that. Sounds like it could be good. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right? It's semi-autobiographical. So if I use myself as the protagonist, I think the meta aspect will go over well with the students who saw my movie last year. Plus, the videos of my mom and the scenes of people trash-talking me are all real, so I can use unscripted, unacted lines, which is fucking heartbreaking. There's so much heartbreak in this script that he came up with. It's, 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 uh... I wouldn't, I, I would say don't do that, please. <laughs> don't hurt me. Right? Oh, yeah, wait, what? It's semi out of, oh, yeah, we, we read that one. If you're recycling old footage, I assume I'm playing the vampire. You know it. All that's left is to write down the plot in a little more detail, and I bet you could whip up a screenplay in no time. Sounds good. Oh, right. Before I write the screenplay, will you meet my dad? Sure. When I told him we were shooting a movie, he said he wanted to meet you. My dad's a chatterbox. He's gonna talk your ear off. Aww, this is cute. You're not talking at all. <laughs> They're not talking, are they? Look, I'm sorry to ruin this nice meal, but as Yuta's father, there's something I need to get off my chest. <laughs> they weren't talking. <laughs> they weren't talking. This entire time it was all in silence. As Yuta's father, there's something I need to get off my chest. Eddie, I want you to stop pushing Yuta to make this movie. Dad, what are you saying? Let him. I saw how much Yuta was hurt by his mother's passing. I saw how much it hurt him when he made that movie to vent his feelings to. My son's been happier since meeting you, and for that I can't thank you enough. But even so, even so if making this new movie hurts him again, this time it might damage his ability to move forward beyond repair. I once aimed to be a creator myself, so I know how it goes. When you create a work you're confident in, and others take your creation and mock it and treat it like a plaything. It it messes you up. I like the father. I love him. But dad, I chose to... Yuta, you be quiet. 
Eddie, get out of this house. I don't want you near Utah ever again. Do you hear me? I promised my late wife that I'd protect this family. You leave our family alone. I'm... I'm begging you, just leave us be. Well, the script writes itself, doesn't it? Doesn't it, Yuta? It writes itself. That's a good movie right there. It wasn't even scripted. I think uh, Fujimoto really wants to make movies, but if we look at his work, it's literally movies, and he has much more control here. I think Fujimoto really... Fujimoto... Visual media are all similar. I don't think he wants to make movies. He'd need to know... He, I think he wants to make art. Like, he wants to draw movies, meaning manga. That's what he's doing. For movies, you need to know all the technical know-how with the cameras, the editing, and so on and so forth. Studios, sets, makeup, and so... There's so much that goes into a movie. And Fujimoto has just maxed out on his entire knowledge and training for manga production. He knows all the ins and outs of manga. He has control with his pen. He doesn't need to learn anything new. He can just create a visual story with a visual medium called manga. I don't think he needs to want to make movies. He's just using movies here because in his last work, manga, like it, it, it's similar things that you can go through. Because it's the, it's the same thing, a visual story. So in one one-shot, you can make it about manga creation. In this one-shot, you can make it about movie creation. It's, uh, he doesn't need to want to make movies to get the same points across. And get the same experience and emotions across. Uh, so, um, and he's already doing, like he, as I said, he has maxed out on experience, knowledge, know-how, skill, uh, and everything for the medium of manga. Uh, so yeah. I think he's good with being a mangaka. Is what I wanted to say. Uh, wait, what? All of this part? Uh, no, not now. I don't think Ujimoto wants to make movies, he just loves them. Yeah. Same. If he really wanted to make movies, he wouldn't have studied Western art. Yeah, he would have gone to film school. Instead, he did everything so he can become good at making manga, not movies. He has an amazing way of bringing the spirit of a movie into his work. It's visual storytelling. It can happen in a movie, it can happen in a manga or in a comic. It's visual storytelling. Yeah, what else says? Huh? I love his dialogue. It feels so organic. Yes. Yes, exactly. Everything feels organic in, in Fujimoto's works. Everything. Uh, and Shinza Man also, when Makima and Denji goes to watch a movie, yeah, I meant similar, but it was for another comment. Anyway, Fujimoto doesn't need to make a movie. Just the fact he can make a manga that has that movie feel is already enough. Yeah, because he... He is m just bringing out all the potential of the medium, of the visual medium called manga. He's bringing it out and completely owning it. Manga are his slaves, and he's their owner. <laughs> Uh, he's maximizing the potential of the medium because he has all the skills that you also need as a visionary for a movie, as a director. It's because as a director, you direct scenes and as a mangaka, you direct scenes and choose the composition. Oh no, 